Uh, okay. <laughs> Moving on to the Google Dome, as you pointed out, you know, one of the things is, you know, Google's a a Android and everything's so going to be running on the Intel architecture now, which is, you know, kind of to be expected because, uh, honestly, the two offerings that are the most similar at this point are Windows 8 and Android. Because Ice Cream is this unified environment trying to get the OS to run form factor uh, agnostic. And Windows is trying to do the same thing with Windows 8. Apple is still insisting on one OS for the desktop, one OS for the phone, one OS for the slate. Yeah, but Google and Microsoft want uh, one form what, factor. Yeah, one OS form to factor. rule all form factors, which is a... I, I, I think a good approach. They're both coming at it from very different ways, but, you know, and we'll see. Um, you know, Ice Cream's supposed to be coming out next month. And to kick it off, for those of you who remember the Atom, <laughs> Norton Inc. swears come November they're going to be running Ice Cream. <laughs> they promised! I, I, I will say it's not vaporware, though. They actually do exist. <laughs> what, Norton Inc. or ice cream? And then both. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know ice cream is in vaporware. Now, what remains to be seen is when ice cream comes out next month, is Google going to fix the not being open clause they've had with honeycomb? Because the whole reason was they were claiming they didn't want people putting it on the wrong form factor, and ice cream's supposed to fix all of that. Supposed to. Yeah. So either they lied about ice cream or they lied about being open. <laughs> or they're going to do what they said and it'll all be open now. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but, you know, it's this in conjunction with all the concerns about Google+. Plus. And you know what, I have a story in here that says Google Plus dead, but Google Plus actually is public again, so it's... <laughs> And yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And honestly, uh, why this story says Google Plus is dead, regardless of what you think about the privacy concerns, which kind of make me a little wiggy and so on. But from a web SEO perspective slash consumption perspective, the reality is Google Plus is a hybridization of Twitter social media it's also an ID service which I don't really like but it's a hybridization of a lot of things it, it will manage your streams and it integrates with Android in a way that's so seamless that you really can see your Android phone or slate just becoming your consumption device you know you don't care that it's geotagging you because it also happens to be useful and that it's telling you everything that's a 50 mile radius of you and just kind of guiding you down the street using the plus account and everything else so but it's this kind of stuff that is putting google under the are you sure you're not an evil monopoly google spyglass of congress and other things well see to me the way Google has tried avoiding all of that is usually by, I don't want to say they open source everything because they really don't, but that's, it seems like how they try to get around, oh, we're a monopoly, see, here's our code. Well, and they, and they give API access to things so that third party people can build stuff on top of their stuff that has nothing whatsoever to do with Google profiting at all. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. However, though, you know, recently they basically um, put the kibosh on millions of AdSense API things and basically shut down thousands of pieces of software. So... <laughs> no, I was going to say, they just, didn't they just shut down um, the public access to, was it the Google Translate? Yes, and, they, right. and they also, it's, I mean, not AdSense, AdWords. <laughs> So they made it real. They, they basically shut down uh, thousands of pieces of software that were dependent on that, on access to that API. Uh, and, and some work, some don't. Right now, it's kind of a better sign. But again, it, it's the reality is, online, many roads lead to Google. You know, Google is the Microsoft of the internet. That they are. I, I, you know, I, I like some of the things Google provides. I don't like some of the things Google does. But you know, Google's Google. 
and, and now there's starting to be a bean counter. It's, it, I, I'm not saying Google's a monopoly, but I'm not saying they're this altruistic, don't be evil saint. They claim to be either. You know, <laughs> there's something in between. You know, they're, 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 you know what, they're Anakin Skywalker before he became Darth Vader. You know, not quite a Jedi, but hasn't quite become a Sith yet. That's what Google is. <laughs> so basically, it's acting Skywalker, uh, basically Slard knows uh, what you call it. Sand, sand people, people. yeah. <laughs> That's what Google is. Google is Anakin Skywalker slaughtering the sand people. They're doing it for a good reason, but it's not a good thing. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a good reason, it was just revenge. <laughs> what well, was a good reason? They killed his mother. <laughs> well, a uh, Jedi is not supposed to seek revenge. I didn't say it was, well, I, I said they're not a Jedi, they're just not quite a Sith yet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I just say, they're not good. They just haven't quite finished turning to the dark side. Okay, they're not good, but not yet evil. Exactly, they're Google. <laughs> Which explains it all, you know, it's like, don't, it's like, it's like, it's, you don't tell people don't be evil, you say don't be Google. <laughs> don't say you're not going to be evil and be evil yeah. just like back in the early 90s it was don't be Microsoft exactly now it's don't be Google and you know the reality is Microsoft's worse than they've ever been in a lot of things but nobody cares <laughs> which is kind of sad don't you think and Apple is out one upping my you know what really the the the, the, the it, it, Microsoft gets the bronze for evil right now uh, the debate is rather good. Oh, IBM. IBM used to have yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah, no, but at this point, Microsoft gets the bronze. The debate at this point is, does Apple or Google deserve the gold? And that honestly depends what you're talking about. <laughs> if you're talking closed ecosystems and blah, 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 I would say Apple. <laughs> yeah. However, if you're talking in Prime a way... Scissors, I would say Google. Yeah. This, what about HTTP and Verizon? No, 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 no. Again, again. You, you know, the, 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 them, you know, even Facebook. You know, they're a runner-up for fourth and fifth. No, it's like the two companies right now are Google and Apple. Who's... Every time you David Levin, top ten list of top ten evil companies. <laughs> <laughs> We should do that at some point. We should do like a, and the top ten evil companies are. <laughs> we get a, we get a pencil. Keep on banging the desk. <laughs> oh. Uh. I get off like oh shit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's company is blah blah blah. All right, next story. Anyways, moving back to the lighter side of things, you know we have yet a, you know this. Uh, the bionic versus the data caps versus more more is less. You know, the bionic is a great phone. It does a lot of things, but it's really hard to use with the Verizon data caps. And there's a number of reviews coming out about it that going all the more on it somehow adds up to less. Remember, VCAS doesn't count, and Skype doesn't count it because he's your mates. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, but like the Bionic's meant to access everything, access your home system using data and and so on and so forth. It, it, it's a data hog device. It's what it, it, it relies on 4G and 3G too much. Yeah. Uh, as to use, um, I know you can set it up for Wi-Fi, but um, it, you, it, a, lot, a lot of the apps now, because we're so used to the unlimited data, and I use that term very loosely. <laughs> Um, because we're so used to that. How's the um, and day with friends? You, you have people that are just programming for, you know, use over 3G with Wi-Fi as, like, an added bonus. <laughs> and, you know, they're advertising 3G access over Wi-Fi access now. Yeah. And it's just, the reality is, it, it, it's, you'll wind up, I, sometime, I think, in the next year, we're going to start seeing the $1,000 bills from hell. You know, people are just going to use their thing, and they're going to go, how did I use that much data? And it's not going to be a lot. They're going to use like 20 or 30 gig. But at $10 a gigabyte, <laughs> doesn't yeah. take long. <laughs> oh, hi, sir. Your data bill this month was $540. <laughs> what? <laughs> Great. So uh, I guess what would happen once that happens? <laughs> Well, 
well, th there's a debate in that. There's this rush as to who's going to blink first. Because the reality is, while we have great phones coming out now, and some good slates coming out over the next 18 months, uh, they're all worthless. Because, for the most part, you can't use them. You, you're, you're, you buy a device that you can never actually use, because if you use it, it will bankrupt you. So, it... So, what's with their business models? Like, if you actually use your phone, you can't use it, and it's... Like, yeah. They can expect some backlash. Well, no, see, that's the thing. Who, who, who's going to blink first? Are consumers going to get used to having 300 to $1,000 cell phone bills? Or... Or are the cell phone companies going to go, Okay, fine. Here is our unlimited plan, but here's what it actually costs us. So give us the 125 bucks, and you can have unmetered. <laughs> you know, who's going to blink first is the real debate right now, because the reality is the whole... Well, right, now, right now, Sprint does offer a true unlimited data plan, but it's like $89 for, a month. And you know what? I don't mind them being expensive. Because to the power user and the person who's actually using these mobile devices, they will pay, I guarantee you, they would pay upwards of 150 to know that's the price. Because if you're actually using data on the go, you would spend through $150 like that using $10 a gig. For people who are using almost no data, the $50 plan is okay. Because with the understanding, oh, you've gone over. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. <laughs> and so on and so forth. You know, our, hell, our money's worth half what it was, anyways. So $150 is like $75 a few years ago, right? <laughs> Not really, because the income hasn't gone up. <laughs> but the money's worth half as much. Uh, yeah, but our income hasn't come up. <laughs> Say that again, Bob. But our income hasn't doubled, so those that are making, you know, thirty thousand dollars aren't making sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> semantics, semantics. You mean we're all getting poorer? That can't be right. <laughs> sure it does. When the government takes a third of my shit. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, and of course, there's another new state-of-the-art gingerbread phone that yeah. nobody will ever use because it has data caps. <laughs> you know, I love Android, don't get me wrong, but uh, seriously, how many times have I heard, this is the next big phone, this is the next big phone, okay, after about the 15th phone, it gets a little old. Well, yeah. and like I said, you can't use any of them. They're great phones. It, it, you can go buy a really great phone right now for a few hundred bucks that's just... Like the Thunderbolt. No, it, it wipes the floor with the Thunderbolt. The, some of the phones that are coming out now, really, they like wipe the phone with iPhones and Thunderbolts and other things. They're great phones, but you can't use them <laughs> because they need Internet, and you can't afford Internet. Why isn't there a Android equivalent? Uh, there's really that much Android equivalent to the iPod Touch, where it's not a phone, but it's a mid, it's a mobile internet device, where it doesn't have a uh, GSM or CDMA chip. Well, my guess is there would be if Light Squared ever gets off the ground. However, Light Squared may be DOA because there's evidence that Light Squared interferes with the military bans. And that they have, you know, bribed people and tried to coerce generals into not testifying that it interfered with shit and other crap. So, Light Squared may be going bankrupt in the next few years if they're not able to... I mean, like, the Wi-Fi only version where you can just, you know, like, have, just fun, have fun, you know? Well, but you need a nationwide Wi-Fi network. No, I mean, like, for your home, like, the iPod Touch does. You're like, it, it, there's, no there's, nation, there's no nationwide iPod. Oh, okay, but you don't really need a mobile device for that. You'd be better off to get a you know small slate, and we we have a growing number of seven well, and five. Well, there people that want that. They they want to they want something that can fit in your pocket. That's like that's just like that. Just, they don't they don't want a tablet. Well, no, I, I, I know, but there's a growing number of seven and five inch, so they're like slightly oversized phones. 
I wouldn't mind a five-inch though. Yeah, like and 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 there's more of those coming. There's more there's more seven, five, and four-inch tablets. Oh, five-inch tablets. Yeah, and there's okay. more on the way. All right. So yeah, those devices are coming. So basically, the size of an L car's pad. <laughs> I have my new pocket. The new pocket. Not to be confused with that. <laughs> Alright, what else is there? Uh, well, there's the super fast search, which some people love and some people hate because it's not available in their area. But that's most of the tech... Uh, techdom. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! Anything else that I missed that we want to go into, or I don't know? Yeah, maybe we can head off. Okay, dude. Unless it's something you want to say, uh, Bob. Bob? I, I can't say Bob like Mr. Bean says Bob. I wish I could. I'm just going to... I can't do it. <laughs> You're in your British humor. Oh, get it. I... I I'll get that sound bite, and you will. You, then you'll understand why I say that. Anyway, I've heard it before. I know what this Bean is. <laughs> no, but you don't know the poli- when he was playing a Bobby, and he kept saying, "Um." <laughs> so yeah. Somehow he made the name Bob a joke, and it was just ah. ah. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> before this gets completely and totally horrible, as if it doesn't already. You know what, I could take this out window style. Anyways, peace out all.